outer space. It's the reason people who aren't perverts have telescopes. For years, scientists have been asking if there is life on Mars, but it turns out they may have been looking in the wrong place. Astronomers have uncovered possible new signs of life on Venus. Its surface is hot enough to melt lead, and it's cloaked in clouds of toxic gas. But scientists now believe something could be alive on Venus, or actually just above it. Professor Sara Seeger, along with a team of international scientists, spotted a molecule called phosphine in the planet's atmosphere using giant telescopes. Finding phosphine, it really leaves us with two equally crazy ideas. One is that there is some unknown chemistry. And the other one is that there's some possibility there might be some kind of life producing phosphine on Venus. Wow. Human beings are amazing. Just five months ago, we finally discovered how to properly wash our hands. And look at us, now we're discovering extraterrestrial life. And I think it's super exciting that there's life on Venus because I've heard that's where all the ladies are from. Ooh, I can't wait to go to Venus, a planet full of only women? Oh, oh, I'm just gonna roll up there and be like, yo, ladies, can you give us some advice on building an egalitarian society based on mutuality free from patriarchy? You know, the one thing that often gets me is that we spend a lot of time trying to discover life on other planets. I feel like we don't spend any time figuring out what we're gonna do when we find life on other planets. Because I mean, given Earth's track record of explorers finding life on other planets they travel to, my advice to Venus is, run, girl! And of all the times to discover alien life, this is the worst time. Because what if the aliens come down to meet us and we give them coronavirus? They're gonna be so mad that we're gonna have to explain that it's not an act of war, but then they'll be like, yeah, but you guys knew you had it. Why didn't you wear a mask? And then we'll be like, well, that's kind of a weird thing that we have right now because of some stuff we read on Facebook. And they'll be like, wait, Facebook? So Zuckerberg is here? We wondered where he ended up. And we'd be like, wait, Zuckerberg's an alien? They'd be like, what, you thought he was a human? Wah! Even though discovering alien life is cool, please remember that our definition of alien life is very different from scientists' definition of alien life. Because in movies, it's always amazing creatures or futuristic aliens. I mean, if anything, they just set us up for disappointment. You know? Because, I mean, they said on Venus, they basically discovered what, like a bacteria? So what they need to start doing is making movies that set up more realistic expectations. The aliens are coming, everybody. Isn't it beautiful? They're gonna give us peace on Earth. Or maybe a new soda flavor. That'd be nice, right? <gasps> Something's coming out. That's it. I left my kids in the bath for this. <sighs> now, we better pray that aliens are really nice and welcoming to humans. Because at the rate climate change is going, we're gonna need a place to crash. Hurricane Sally is expected to make landfall as a category one tomorrow, producing heavy rain and a potentially life-threatening storm surge. States of emergency have already been declared in Mississippi, Alabama, and Louisiana. The slow moving storm is packing winds around 100 miles per hour. It's expected to drop nearly two feet of rain. For only the second time in recorded history, five tropical cyclones are churning in the Atlantic at the same time. We're running out of letters to name them, so soon we'll be using the Greek alphabet for storm names. Welcome to 2020, people where we've had so many hurricanes that now we're gonna start using the Greek alphabet. I mean, I guess after that, they're gonna go to colors. And after that, they're gonna have to get ideas from Elon Musk. Ah, it's Hurricane Xeon 7. How, how, do you, how do you pronounce the upside down G? And guys, you know what's crazy to me is that even though we're seeing the effects of climate change almost every day, there are still tons of people in this country who are like, I don't know if it's real. And even if it is, I'm not really afraid of it. But what's funny is those are the same people who are like, a Muslim family moved into my neighborhood? What is their secret plan? So maybe we just need to use that irrational fear to get people to take climate change seriously. Yeah, instead of naming them Hurricane Sally or Hurricane Diane, they should call it Hurricane Abdul Bashir Jalaluddin Bakhari. In 12 hours, America will be all vegan and everyone in NASCAR will drive a Prius. We gotta save this goddamn planet, yo! Speaking of which, there's another crisis engulfing the country that's even more directly tied to climate change, 
the West Coast wildfires. With less than 50 days until the election, President Trump and Joe Biden are clashing over climate change. While meeting with California's governor, the president downplayed the role of climate change in the wildfires ravaging the region. His Democratic rival blasted that attitude. Donald Trump's climate denial may not have caused these fires and record floods and record hurricanes. If you give a climate arsonist four more years in the White House, why would anyone be surprised if we have more America blaze? We want to work with you to really recognize the changing climate and what it means to our forests and actually work together with that science. That science is going to be key because if we, if we ignore that science and sort of put our head in the sand and think it's all about vegetation management, we're not going to succeed together protecting Californians. Okay. It'll start getting cooler. <laughs> I you wish just, you just watch. Mr. President, you're right. It will start getting cooler. That's called winter, gold star. So I guess Trump's approach to climate change is the same as his approach to coronavirus. Just deny its existence and then hope it'll magically disappear. Which probably means six months from now, Bob Woodward is gonna release a tape where Trump is gonna be doing a detailed PowerPoint on carbon emissions impact on global temperatures. And this is why the solar flares that we're experiencing at a stratospheric level are so, hold on, Fox News. Ay, 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 But it's no wonder that Trump doesn't believe in science, people. The dude's been defying science his whole life. I mean, when science told him he couldn't subsist on a diet of fast food, meatloaf, and steak for 74 years, Trump was like, challenge accepted. Now, if you think that the president was at all embarrassed by that exchange. Well, you clearly don't know Trump because rather than hiding in shame, he spent nearly an hour this morning chatting with his best friends on Fox News. And he obviously thought the interview went great, but something tells me that even they are wondering if they can keep this up for another four years. Mr. President, I think you broke a lot of news this morning. Thank you very much for starting your day with Fox and Friends. Thank you. Okay, it's been we'll, great. Thank and we'll you do it every much. week. We're gonna um, do it every week. I look forward to it. Yeah, we're going to do it every week. Every Monday, I think they said. And uh, if, if we can't do it on a Monday, we'll do it on a Tuesday like we did today. All Sounds right. good. Uh, Mr. President, okay. thank you very much. Uh, you may want to do it every week, but uh, Fox is not committed to that. We're going to take it on a case-by-case -case basis. And uh, Joe Biden, as well, is always welcome to uh, join us for 47 minutes, like we just did with the president. All right. Uh, Donald Trump, President of the United States. Wow. Steve Ducey just told the presidents of the United States, don't call us, we'll call you. Imagine that, he's the most powerful man in the world and they're treating him like he's a Jehovah's Witness who's also selling timeshares. And the fact that Ducey even knew that it was 47 minutes just shows you how annoyed he was. Not 45 minutes, not an hour, 47 minutes exactly. That's someone who spent most of a conversation staring at their watch. And by the way, if Melania ever wanted to have an affair, Trump's Fox News interviews would be the perfect time for her to do it. Okay, Eduardo, my husband just called into Fox now, so we have anywhere between 45 minutes and three hours to make called indifferent love. But still, man, I wanna give props to Steve Ducey for inviting Joe Biden on the show to make it seem like Fox and Friends is a balanced news show. That was pretty cool. Yeah, at the end, he was just like, just to be clear, we will also talk with Joe Biden. It's only fair. All right, coming up next, are Democrats gonna burn your house down while you're asleep? We'll discuss, but the answer is yes.